from the Cyber Hub Bunker and Studio. You're tuning in to the Cyber Hub Podcast. And now for your host and CISO, James Azar. Good morning, security gang. Welcome to another episode of the Cyber Hub Podcast. I'm obviously not in my studio this morning, as many of you could tell. The background's not the same. Well, I had to travel again this week. Uh, just so you know, we are rebuilding the studio, and I will be out of the studio probably for the next two to three weeks. Um, and then in May, we'll have a brand new studio, which I'm really, really excited about. So uh, that's that's really exciting. So for the next few weeks, I'll be slugging it between my travels and setting up a separate studio while the new one gets constructed. So really, really excited about that. Thank you all for tuning in this morning. We've got a packed show for all of y'all today. Uh, change healthcare getting a stitch of double extortion there on ransomware with uh with with a very interesting development and story there as well plenty of breach news today as well as the dealing story we talked about yesterday really underestimated in the first headlines now we understand the, the severity of it we'll be talking that about that a little bit more and a whole lot more on this morning's show so stay tuned don't go anywhere. Let's get the show going. I would typically share a double espresso with y'all. I've traveled. I couldn't get my hands on a double espresso that wasn't from Starbucks, and I couldn't do that to my body. My body deserves better than Starbucks. Be better than Starbucks. So as a general rule of thumb, uh, coffee cup cheers. Enjoy your coffee, whatever you're drinking this morning. I'll have one tomorrow. I promise I'm, I'm going to go get a Celsius at least uh, this, this, this afternoon so I can have one for tomorrow. So Coffee Cup Cheers, let's go ahead and get started. Go check out our Substack. Please make sure to subscribe. You can find all the latest. Their exclusive content is only available on our Substack, jamesazar.substack.com. Change Healthcare is reportedly facing an additional ransomware gang called Ransom Hub. Just a week after falling victim to the Black Cat uh, ransomware attack that crippled the healthcare industry. The Black Cat attack had significant impact on the healthcare industry from pharmacies being able to fill prescriptions to doctors being able to service their patients. Ransom Hub, a fairly new ransomware group, it's the first time we talk about them on the show, is demanding an extortion payment for an alleged four terabytes worth of data stole from the company. Otherwise, it's threatening to sell that data to the highest bidder in 12 days. They claim that the sensitive data stolen is that of U.S. military personnel and patients, as well as medical records and financial information, among more in that data aspect there. Change Healthcare and United Health. You have one chance in protect your, your clients' data, according to Ransom Hub. The data has not been leaked anywhere, and any decent threat intelligence would confirm that the data has not been shared or posted. This puts Change Healthcare in a very peculiar position of having to decide whether or not to pay ransom or, um, you know, kind of take, take, see if they really do have the data. According to Malachi Walker, who's a security advisor at Domain Tools, he goes, this new information supports a few theories that their team has suggested, but it's unfortunate that this might be a conflict between two rival uh, ransomware gangs. Even if it's not connected to Black Cat Ransom Hub, could be claiming ties to the victims to scare them into making payment. There is a vast underground economy booming around the ransomware scene today where affiliate programs recruit on hacker forms, initial access brokers, sell footholds in organizations, and ransomware groups collaborate to share that information. We'll see exactly how this plays out for Change Healthcare, but now another twist in this ranch called ransomware for many organizations that are dealing with it today. The laptop and tablet accessory maker Targus discussed that it suffered a cyber attack disrupting operations after a threat actor gained access to the company's file servers. Targus is a mobile accessories company known for laptop bags and carrying cases. The company also sells tablet cases, docking stations, keyboards, mice, and travel accessories that filed an 8K on Monday morning with the SEC. Uh, Targus' parent company, Beat Riley Financial, disclosed that the laptop bag maker detected attackers on its network on the 5th of April as part of the attack. A threat actor gained access to the Targus file systems, causing the company to initiate its incident, its incident response protocols. Um, and again, this is the traditional stuff. We've engaged third-party experts. We're working hard to restore, to identify what's going on here. 
Uh, the company says they've notified regulatory authorities and law enforcement regarding the, the regarding the unauthorized access to information. Um, and so we'll see what comes out of this one. So one thing with the SEC rules is now we know about this stuff right away, but we don't know anything else about it because they've got to report it within three to four days. They've essentially, you know, the now the lawyers have essentially come up with a blanket statement saying we've experienced an, an, an event of, uh, someone accessed our environment we think they stole something we don't know what it is yet we don't know how they got in we don't know anything but we know this happened um and and so we're kind of left looking at the headline going well there's you know that's that's great that there's you know something on top but everything in the middle is just lacking what we need in order to better be uh better to be a better informed defender or practitioner pacific guardian life insurance says 165 thousands uh, individuals had their financial information stolen by cyber criminals in the cyber attack that took place in August of last year on the Hawaii based insurance giant. Pacific Guardian Life Insurance filed documents with regulators in Maine, uh, put a notice on its website about a data breach that began on August 25th of last year. On September 5th, PGL identified suspicious activities within its email environment, the company said, explaining that an investigation into the incident concluded on March 5th. Founded in 1961, the insurance giant has thousands of customers across 46 states. The incident continues to study drumbeat of breaches affecting millions of customers who either use services from U.S. companies or work for one. So um, there's that news there as well. Veterinary services provider CVS Group on Monday informed U.K. regulators that it was experiencing operational disruptions following a cyber attack those who don't know cvs group is a veterinary uh type of uh, uh facility for uh, people's pets in the uk the event the company said involved unauthorized access to a limited number of its it systems that were taken offline as part of the incident response plan the response is to contain the threats of the malicious activity that have caused considerable operational disruption over the past week but to date have been effective in preventing further external access to their systems they've engaged third parties again the standard stuff that we see from if we've engaged third party we're working hard um and so forth additionally the incident uh prompted cvs to accelerate its plan to migrate its it infrastructure to the cloud to improve service security and operational efficiency all in all they have 500 locations in the uk australia netherlands and ireland and uh, employ 9,000 people, a majority of which is its veterinary practice in the UK. The RCE bug on the D-Link network attached storage yesterday, that we talked about it on the show yesterday. This was first reported on Saturday, CVE 2024-3273. Uh, well, there's an exploit for it already. There's 92,000 of these devices that are unpatched and exposed to the internet with no way of patching, by the way. These are end-of-life devices, meaning take them offline, transfer the data over, get something new now. There's no other way around it. Threat actors on Monday. Attack started on Monday as observed by uh, cybersecurity firm Gray Noise and threat monitoring platform Shadow Servers. Two weeks earlier, security researcher NetSecFish disclosed the vulnerability after Dealing informed them that the end of life devices would not be patched. So now you're seeing that. When asked whether security updates would be released to patch the zero day vulnerability, Dealing also Dealing also said they no longer support end of life NOS devices, meaning you're left on your own, spend money, get a new device. Um, otherwise, you risk those NOS devices being taken advantage of. Cybersecurity researchers have discovered a new intricate multi-stage attack that leverages invoice-themed phishing decoys to deliver a wide range of malware like the Venom RAT, the Remcos RAT, Xworm, Nanocore RAT, and a stealer that targets crypto wallets. This is coming from Fortinet FortiGuard's lab saying the email comes in a scalable vector graphic file attachment that when clicked activates the infection sequence. The modus operandi is notable for the use of the bat cloak malware obfuscation engine and the scrub crypt to deliver the malware in the form of an obfuscated batch scripts. Bat cloaked offered for sale to other threat actors since at least 2022 has its foundation in another tool called GLive. Its primary feature is to load a next stage payload in a manner that circumvents traditional detection mechanism. And that's one of the things that the threat actors have gotten really good at obfuscating these payloads 
putting them in that memory, putting them in that boot where you're not scanning. And so, and then where, where you really are kind of defenseless because you're kind of operating in that, well, trust environment. And so the more advanced they get, this one specifically is, uh, is, 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 is very interesting. Trend Micro for their end, um, I first saw something like this in March of last year, 2023, in connection with a crypto jacking campaign that was orchestrated by the 8220 gang. Um, so there's that. Uh, while Venom RIT's primary program may appear straightforward and maintains communication channels with their CT servers to acquire additional plugins for various activities, these payloads are not only um, going in and, and, and doing the work, they're also maintaining persistence and communications with the outside. Essentially, once they understand the network they're in, once they've got an idea, they'll drop more and more tools and loads there in order to gain persistence and, and access and steal data. The attackers employ a variety of method, including phishing emails with malicious attachments, obfuscated script files, and a GU loader PowerShell to infiltrate and compromise victim systems. So you definitely want to tighten those, um, those defenses. One thing you could do, by the way, is just block SVG files from being sent. You do that, you solve 90% of the problem. Um, and then the only time those are ever needed is in marketing. And you can definitely set that up to be shared through an external source. And you mitigate most of this threat at the moment. Economic analysis and litigation support firm Greylock McKinnon Associ Associates is notifying over 340 individuals that their personal and medical information was compromised in a year-old data breach. The incident detected in May of last year, but it took the firm roughly eight months to investigate and determine what type of information was compromised and to identify the impacted individuals. According to the GMA notification letter to the affected individuals, a copy of which was submitted to the main attorney general's office, both personal and medical information was compromised in the data breach. Your personal and medical information was likely affected in this incident, according to the statement. You have inf uh, the information that may have includes your name, date of birth, address, Medicare health insurance claim number, which contains a social security number associated with a member, and some medical information and or health insurance information, according to uh, as the notification letter reads. Uh, the compromised data, GMA says, was obtained by the U.S. Department of Justice as part of a civil litigation matter. More than uh, 340 individuals were affected by the data breach, uh, the company told the main AGO. Jimmy also says it notified law enforcement of the incident, consulted third-party specialists, you know, the general stuff. GMA uh, provides economic analysis and litigation support and civil litigation matters. The firm works with both domestic and international customers, and they're the latest victim there as well. A sweeping bipartisan comprehensive data privacy bill is being introduced by congressional leader. This one uh, unveiled on Sunday would offer historic privacy protection and appears to have momentum on both sides of the aisle. This is coming from two congresswomen bipartisan from the state of Washington, Maria Cantwell and, Rep and, and Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers. Their elevates privacy to consumer rights, preempts a patchwork of state laws that have been friendly to big tech and gives Americans the right to stop the transfer and sale of their data. The newly unveiled bill will supersede McMorris Rogers' prior attempt at a comprehensive data privacy legislation, also known as the American Data Privacy and Protection Act, which has stalled in committee now for about four or five years. The bill benefits from its origins with longtime congressional leaders. Ken Wells chairs the Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation. McMorris Rogers leads the House Energy and Commerce Committee. If passed, the bill would also force companies to minimize the data they gather, store, and use about people regardless of their age, requiring firms to only collect data needed to provide the product or service at hand. The legislation also allows people to opt out of data processing if a company updates privacy terms. The bill would safeguard sensitive data by requiring affirmative and explicit consent before it can be transferred to a third party like a data broker, allowing people to opt out of targeted advertising according to the targeted, uh, according to the targeted, according to the draft of the legislation, I'm sorry. Critically, the bill also includes a, a private right of action, which allows people to sue companies which violate their privacy rights instead of having to rely on overburdened state attorney general offices to act. It also requires firms to let people see, correct, erase, and export their data. All in all, this also involves geolocation data. And so the bill, I haven't read it yet, uh, sounds interesting. Uh, I'll get my hands on the draft and give you all a more thorough 
uh, breakdown uh, here over the next week or so. That's it for our show this morning. We'll be back with a whole lot more tomorrow, 9 a.m. Eastern live right here. Make sure to subscribe, follow us on your favorite podcast listening platform. Until then, have a great rest of your day. And most importantly, stay cyber safe, y'all. We love feedback, so make sure to connect with us on social media and subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast listening platform.